Hi, I'm Jeff. This is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north. Now, today we're going to talk about a plant which I first made a video on back in November of 2019, which isn't a year ago yet, but it seems like forever ago in terms of YouTube and certainly in terms of my growing tropical plants. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an update on it, we're going to talk, talk about some of its care needs and I want to try and answer some of the questions that I've seen frequently crop up on various forums and in the comments. One of which is why is my Mandevilla or my Diplodenia dying? And we're also going to try and clear up the confusion over the naming of this plant. So let's jump in. And we're in. Okay, so we're over near my Diplodenia sanderi and that was the label that came with the plant when I bought it. I think it was in the middle of last summer, um, probably late spring, but it certainly couldn't have been any earlier than late spring because I didn't have this particular greenhouse then. And it was sold in a garden centre in the UK as a summer climber. Now in actual fact, this is a tropical climber and it comes from Brazil. It's actually endemic to Rio de Janeiro area. The common name of this plant is Brazilian Jasmine. And I want to clear up the name in confusion first because it's confused me for, for quite a number of months. And I think I've kind of got the hang of it now and got it down to a, an answer that I'm happy with. So you see them talked about as Diplodenia sanderi. You see them talked about as Mandevilla vine. I've also seen Mandevilla sanderi uh, and various other names and synonyms. Now, the truth is this. The actual genus is Mandevilla, okay? Now that is named after Henry Mandeville. Um, he, was, he was actually dead when it was named after him, this genus, but it was John Lindley who was a, a famous British explorer and plant finder, for want of a better word, a plant hunter, I think they used to call them, uh, back in the 19th century. And what he did was he, went all over the world looking for different plants, brought them back, and then obviously he was involved with working with Kew Gardens in order to name them and catalogue them and so on. So he named this genus Mandevilla. Now the species, or there are several species, but this particular species is Diplodenia sanderi. This is the species. Now there are several species, there are also several cultivars. So, the short answer is, all of these Brazilian jasmines are Mandevilla vines, all of them. However, some of them are different to others, because some of them are different cultivars. So you will find red ones, pink ones, yellow ones, white ones, different size and different shape of leaves. Um, they'll all have similar growth habits, similar conditions, but as with any hybrids or any species there may be a few differences so if you have something that has a different name it's worth looking up that individual plant to try and find its care needs but there are some generalizations that we can make so i hope that clears it up so this one that you're looking at was actually labeled diplodenia sanderi however that just to add to the confusion uh, it's very often called Mandevilla sanderi as well so it's no wonder people get confused um, but like I say this one was labelled in the garden centre Diplodenia sanderi but I'm quite happy to refer to it as Mandevilla or Mandevilla sanderi incidentally that was named after Henry Mandeville uh, who was also a gardening enthusiast a British one as well for that so let's describe the plant and then I'll show you its progress um, and maybe I will link at this point to my initial video back in November 2019 to how big it was at that time. It was certainly a lot smaller than it is now, but it still looks nevertheless as good as it does now. So just to describe the plant, so it, it's a vining plant and it has a bushy habit. Oh, by the way, we'll definitely try and answer this question why yours might be dying, why the leaves might be falling off, why they might be yellowing. Um, why it's not vining. These are all questions that I've seen and I'm going to try and answer them. So just a quick description of the plant. So it's a vining plant with a bushy habit. It has large tuberous roots and they contain a starch. So that gives you an idea of the watering because this tuberous root means that it does have the ability to withstand drought. 
so we'll talk about the watering in a little while it has a very long flowering period mine was actually only not in flower for about five or six weeks uh, around february march time where the temperatures in here anyway in this particular side of the greenhouse because we're in the warm side now i've took the partition door down and there's the cooler side there but we're in a we're going through a, a bit of a warmer week so it makes sense to take the partition down because it's not really separating any temperatures off so long flowering period we said they come in different colors and they are evergreen leaves so really they shouldn't really be dropping off on mass as with any evergreens the, the leaves don't last forever so you will find that they'll drop off at some point but if you can see that a lot of yours are yellowing and dropping off then you've got something wrong with the care conditions of which we will discuss in a second so the blooms i'll just zoom in on a few blooms are born on these racemes so you have like just one shoot that comes off there and you get several blooms on each raceme and um, they, they do last quite a while however when they begin to go over you know they go over because you'll find like just one of the petals will start to flop inwards i'll show you that in a second just want to go through these bits and then we'll talk about why yours might be dying so i'll start off with the pot in the corner so this is in the same pot i see no reason at this particular point to transplant it so there's a couple that fall naturally there's nothing wrong with a few brown leaves on it doesn't mean that your plant is dying at that point so while i'm at it i'll just clean and get rid of those <laughs> so you can see mine is beginning to dry out now i'll leave it a bit longer than that and eventually i will give it a water when the whole thing has gone like a pale brown i also have one of these moisture detectors which i can stick in there just to make sure that it has thoroughly dried out these little spheres on the surface these are a feed i just go off whatever is on it tells me on the packet stick them on there and that is absolutely fine they're not fussy fertilizer plants you stick on whatever it says on the label and it will be happy with that but only during the growing season doesn't need it need it during the off season so it starts there uh, it did start to send a few vining shoots out here but they will not go any further than that that they are part of the bushy habit that it begins with it takes a while before it decides it wants to vine and just before we go any further i'll just take you over slowly so that you don't get seasick on the way uh, some of you might have seen my video on propagating these where I took three cuttings and they, these are they. These are the three cuttings. There's one there, one there, one there. That one's a bit slow taking off. I put them all in the same pot and you can see they're already blooming and at the moment these are not vining. They go through different stages so you find that initially they will want to bloom and I'm quite happy for them to do that they only start vining once they really get established uh, the one that you've just been looking at was already established because it came from a garden centre so it was already uh, a at a certain maturity level so it had already begun to vine I'd be interested to see how long these take before they do start to vine I'm going to let them bloom, do the thing I'll update you on that so we'll just nip back over to my Diplodenia, Mandevilla Sanderi, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, I was looking at the, the blooms there. Um, they, they come in different colours. Some of them have like a different coloured throat in the middle. Some of them are scented as well, which would be nice. I would certainly like some more of them, but I've not seen any others than the, than the red one in the British Garden Centres. So it goes up there, past the shelving, and then it goes off in this direction up to there and incidentally if anybody saw my saving a thungberg gear alata that is it and it's got its first bloom back again today so that's a success but anyway we're on diplodenia today it travels along the corner there and then it does a bit of an upswing and starts to go up the gable end here of the greenhouse now you can see see how that bloom there has begun to flop so that one I will deadhead. If you leave them, they just they have this like really accommodating habit of just dropping off anyway, but because I'm a bit OCD, I cut them off. That one you can see 
just one little part of the petal has begun to flop so that'll be gone tomorrow that one will be gone tomorrow so i cut those off but there is always plenty of buds coming out always so we'll follow it on and let's move on up up to the roof now, i don't know what the lighting is going to be like for you here and it goes along the roof i've just got it going along the up to where the window goes and that's where it finishes so all in all i think that's probably about two to three meters which is roughly about as far as they go they don't tend to go much more than that um, absolutely perfect for a conservatory but there's a caveat with that which again i'll come to in a moment so you can see why i like them so much it really really does add uh, a fantastic splash of color for pretty much all of the year and uh, i would definitely like to source some of the different colors if anybody knows if there are any available in the uk um, stick it in the comments and i'll have a look at it okay so let's talk about why yours might be dying and why mine is thriving in a greenhouse it's a tropical plant and as such any frost will kill it so it's sold as a bedding plant in the uk so if you put yours in the ground outside it'll be absolutely fine until the temperatures drop below about 15 degrees celsius and when mine was at 15 degrees celsius in february and march time that's when it decided to have a rest it didn't do anything nothing happened to it adversely no leaves fell off there was no other signs that anything was happening other than it wasn't blooming at the time so i held back a little bit on the watering and in actual fact i tend to wait anyway until it's dried out which brings me to the watering so in the growing season you'll find it needs quite a lot of water but i think this is possibly where people might be killing those if you give it too much water then that is definitely guaranteed to get it to look a lot weaker the leaves will drop off and it will wilt if you overwater it it mustn't be sitting in water it is a tropical plant we've already talked about the fact that it's quite drought tolerant which in most plants that are drought tolerant they do not want to be overwatered. so that's the first thing definitely err on the side of underwatering than overwatering when it comes to frequency of watering but when you do water it make sure you give it plenty and it drains through but don't let it sit in the water so that's one of the reasons why yours might be dying another reason is the temperature so if you're growing yours inside so let's say you're in the uk and you have or you have a similar climate to the uk and yours is growing in a conservatory well i know in my conservatory temperatures can go down to five degrees celsius in winter that's too cold frost will definitely kill it but anything below about 15 degrees celsius it's not going to be happy so that might be another reason why yours is dying in terms of positioning well mine's in a fairly shady spot over there because i've got an 85 percent shade cloth on the other side uh, just the way the sun comes around in this greenhouse if i didn't have that though it would completely burn it if yours is in a conservatory or a greenhouse and obviously they've both got to be heated but if you're just having it there for the summer and the temperatures are, are okay for it don't let it be in direct sun behind the glass no plant likes to be in direct sun behind glass i don't know of any plant that would survive that so that might be another reason yours is dying you must have it shaded if it's behind glass that's not the same as in shade that just means it must be shaded to some degree so we've said overwatering might kill it underwatering might kill it of course standing it in water might be a reason yours is dying the temperatures might be a reason and being behind glass in direct sun also might be a reason and here's another one it likes high humidity now if you've got it in a conservatory or a greenhouse you're probably more likely to make it survive in a greenhouse in the summer because if you're in the uk it rains a lot humidity is generally high however in a house it's different houses are notorious for being low in humidity especially in the uk so if yours is in a conservatory and it's dying the lack of humidity might be the problem now you can remedy that with a hydrofogger if you're as obsessive as me 
for getting the conditions right or you can do the old trick of spraying it regularly but make sure you don't use tap water if it's hard tap water it doesn't like any tap any water spraying on its leaves if they have calcium or if it has calcium in it so that might be another reason so if you do spray it with tap with water or tap water either use soft tap water or use rain water something without the calcium in it so that's another reason potting up now i said that what you can see down here that was my one and only repot i did that quite early on because it was in a really small pot it's not been repotted since it's only a year since no reason for me to repot it i'll probably do it in another 12 months just because it's nice to refresh it occasionally but i certainly wouldn't do it every 12 you know every year like we do with some of the other tropical plants like orchids for example so it's just in a general purpose compost a Johninus 2 or 3 will be fine for it as long as it's well drained and the time to do that is February or March time just before the main growing season starts to go I didn't mention the latex that's inside it you'll notice that when you do cut the flowers off or cut any of the stems off then it bleeds it bleeds quite a bit it is filled with like a white toxic irritant latex uh, which you've got to be careful not to get on yourself um, so if you do have any pets or any children maybe this isn't the one for you if you want to prune it well it doesn't take a really hard prune we're talking about a, about a third so if you've got like a long twining shoot then you can cut that back by about a third and again the time to do that is springtime and as far as propagation goes well i've already mentioned that i've took three cuttings they all took very easily not difficult to do you just need to make sure you don't take one of the twining stems of, as a cutting because the twining stem i'm just looking if i can if i can see one you can just about see one up there sorry for the light there there is another example down there in the corner you can just see that one coming up there and um, you can see there's quite a big gap between the nodes and that's what is characteristic of all the twining stems that will be useless as a cutting you need to find a non twining stem in order to, to do take a cutting from so this one down here would be perfect so that would make really good cutting material I didn't use I don't think if I can recall I don't think I used any rooting hormone but of course if you want to find out for sure I'll put a card up and you can see my video on propagating the mandevilla vine so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to stick a couple of cards up which is some of the other videos that i've done on this plant which show you how to propagate it and talk about some other kernies that i might not have discussed here so for now i will see you on the next one bye